Hi all, and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be covering Age of Sigmar. This will be a brief breakdown where I attempt to highlight something interesting and unique each army can do. Now this doesn't mean other armies can't also do this thing, however the whole point of this is to kind of give you an idea of what the armies can do and give you a fun way to experience what each one can do uniquely and individually. To start, Age of Sigmar is a fantasy battle game that is created by Games Workshop. It is one of their flagship titles, but it is not as big as Warhammer 40,000. It has a lot of unique and interesting factions, around 26, that have simple and easy to understand rules. And it already has rules that fit onto one page, suck that 10th edition. To start with, we have the most unique and interesting of these, the Factions of Order, the Cities of Sigmar. It is a faction made up of a lot of the older Warhammer fantasy models. They sort of play as a joint militia. There are seven different cities to choose from, all of which have unique faction rules, abilities, and interesting traits and relics you can take with you. They can play as an elite or horde army as well, and are a great choice for someone who loves the older look of the miniatures and just wants to, you know, do their own thing, make their own way. They are getting new minis as well, which look absolutely fantastic. Next up is the Daughters of Cain. These are Naga, female warriors with a fierce bloodlust that honor their deity by spilling as much blood as possible. They have a lot of faction-wide buffs that allow you to fight with a bloodlust, and have faction traits that let some of your units fall back and charge, fight twice on a 4-up, and sometimes fight on death allowing flexibility and control in yours and your opponent's combat and fight phases. They have a spell focus on buffing their strengths while also giving you a bag of tricks to draw from, like Mirror Dance, which lets you switch out the location of two of your heroes. A great thing to do to mess with an enemy who thought they could get in a charge on a weak hero. They are a good choice for someone who wants to dictate the flow of battle and have a lot of flavor in your bloodlust-filled warrior women. Next up are the Fire Slayers. Do you like lizards? Do you like crazy dwarves? Welcome to the Fire Slayers. These crazy dwarves just hit hard, fighting their magma-fueled giant lizards into battle. Most of their strengths come in the synergies with these mounts that their battle traits grant them. They have a lot of strengths in the fight phase, mainly in their Slayer models hitting harder and harder than most other main battle line infantry. They have a lot of synergies with priests, which can give them a unique feel and draw, and their prayers are focused on increasing survivability and granting the ability to fight twice in a round. While I do believe the range here is a little limited, it more than makes up for it in the fun way you can play this elite faction of dwarves. Next up are the Ideneth Deepkin. Arguably not good, these are horrors of the deep, elves riding ancient sea creatures that raid coasts and take everything they find, including your soul. Ideneth Deepkin are a faction with built-in range screening, unique bonuses that allow them to be one of the most mobile armies in the game, and a strong selection of spells that only increase those aspects. Although not a slouch in melee, they excel at focusing down powerful enemies before even charging in. And I mean, look at them. Elves riding eels, sharks, weird underground turtle things. Next up are the Caradron Overlords. Steampunk dwarves that will high above the clouds and hold them with their skyships. Do you want to play a melee-focused rank-and-plank wargame as a gunline army of steampunk dwarves? Then yes, this is the perfect army for you. Although their melee is not the best, they make up for it in large skyships that can travel the entire battlefield and have their dwarves fire below into the enemy. The transports are key in this army. You're always going to want a couple on the field, and they can usually move almost anywhere on the field, being able to be picked up and put down as needed. They do not have spells, but an artifact that allows you to selectively cast other factions' endless spells, which is arguably better as you get to choose the best out of all of them. Next up is the Lumineth Realm Lords. The Lumineth Realm Lords are angelic beings in this time of strife, and finding them is akin to declaring war on heaven itself. They are an army that focuses heavily on shooting, and controlling the fight phase it can do both very well. While not as mobile as the Deepkin, they make up for it in strength. They are an elite army of elves, but that just means you need to know the matchups well before charging something in and risking losing it. While they are good at shooting and fighting, they are arguably not the best at both. While having a balance can be a good thing, this can be both their biggest strength and their biggest weakness. Immortal toads that travel the stars and spawn dinosaurs to fight for them. The Seraphon lizard men are the horde army that hit strong or they're an army full of monsters. They have a new range refresh and book coming out very soon. The army can be well used as a mixed force of solid infantry and monsters, which give it a lot of options. They are also surprisingly good at summoning in their new book. They have very good character units that act as amazing centerpieces. This whole miniature range just looks absolutely beautiful. Next up are the Sylvaneth. Have you ever wanted to be an army of trees that kill people who walk into their forest? Well, now you can. They are merciless as nature. 
vengeful spirits that embody death to all who wrong them. The Silverneth play well into board control. One of their army-wide abilities is they can take over terrain pieces and make them overgrown, allowing healing around those key locations. Combined with th their movement options that can let you zip around the different overgrown terrain pieces, along with spells and other ways to teleport across the field, they can keep enemies zoned out of important objectives. Their spells only make their key features stronger, allowing even more healing and mortal wound generation. This is an army for you if you want to just deny the enemy a chance to even go into the sides of the board you don't even want them to touch. And next up, we have the Factions of Chaos, starting with the Beasts of Chaos. In the wildest corners of the realms, the Beasts of Chaos gather for war. Amalgams of animals in monstrous forms, these Servants of Chaos spawn from the warp with a bestial fury. They are an ambush army. You can set up the entire army on the sidelines unless otherwise noted, and deploy them where they are needed as the battle goes on. This is a great way to mess with your enemy, and take control of deployment in an interesting and unique way. Their spells as well focus mostly on damage dealing and shutting down enemy units before they can do anything. Next up are the Blades of Corn. Sworn to the Chaos God Corn, they seek blood for the Blood God, and skulls for the Skull Throne. These corn sworn demons and mortals hit hard, and have dominance in melee and a bag of tricks to pull from. With Blood Tithe, you go stronger as more units die, whether it be your own or your opponents. This is another army that has priests, but no normal spellcasting. The prayers help with mobility and buff your units in general. Next, we have the Disciples of Zinch. While others fight, Zinch watches as his plans unfold exactly as he wanted them. The truth is, every battle goes the way he plans, and the outcome of the battle was decided before the first arrow is shot. This is a spell-heavy army. You will bring a lot of casters, and have a cacophony of buffs to help you get their spells off and let your army survive. Destiny Dice are their fun little unique army mechanic and it lets you change the flow of battle by helping you pass voles you would otherwise fail. The Hedonites of Slanesh, drowning in the ecstasy of their dark master, the Hedonites throw themselves into battle with a smile and plunge into indulgent violence. They are buffed by depravity points, which you get by both dealing and taking damage on units. These points let you summon demons onto the field as the battle continues. They have access to multiple spell lores that buff the army and give them the ability to generate even more of their depravity points. The Maggotkin of Nurgle. Serving the god of plagues, these Maggotkin fester as they dominate the battlefield while causing fear and revulsion in their enemies. They generate plagues that spread throughout the battlefield as they fight, giving them buffs for each phase and debuffing the infected enemy. They also generate contagion points for spreading themselves across the battlefield, allowing more demons to be summoned. The spell lore is focused on wearing the enemy down with debuffs, and increasing the spread of disease. Next up are the Skaven, skittering rats that are mutated in horrific ways. The Skaven swarm their enemies with numbers and the power of Warpstone. These ratmen are a horrid army, bringing heavy numbers to any engagement. The Skaven rely heavily on screening out their important units with chaff. Their spell lores focus on keeping movement going and buffing their units. They also have access to prayers, which give you more options to do the same. And the last of our factions of Chaos, the Slaves to Darkness. The mortals that willingly swear themselves to Chaos, led by Archaon the Everchosen, bringer of the Apocalypse. This army has a lot of synergies with the other Chaos factions, and a ton of buffs that help their very elite army stand strong. And you can also do fun little things like make every hero a caster in this army with white battle traits, and their spells cover a lot of damage dealing, buffing, and debuffing very well. Starting off the Factions of Death, we have the Flesh Eater Courts. Ghouls that believe themselves to be feasting on the finest of food and wine, instead of the blood and flesh of their enemies. This is an army of disillusionment with reality itself. This is an army of death, with large constructs of dragons forming a monster battle line that is buffed by the swarms of ghouls. Their Courts of Delusion also grant a variety of buffs that can help you focus on a specific goal for this army. They have access to spells powered by their madness that cover a little bit of everything. The ghostly phantoms from the realm of death, these creatures form from the ancient burial grounds, corpse-strewn battlefields, or wherever death occurs. They generate fear and terror among their enemies, granting special abilities and debuffing enemies who get too close. They can retreat and charge in the same turn army-wide, and ignore certain debuffs since they're already phantoms. Their spell lore increases in the terror they can strew across the battlefield, and their miniature mange looks absolutely fantastic. Next up on the Factions of Death, one of my personal favorite and the one that got me into the game, 
the Osiarch Bone Weepers, the elite army of the god of death himself, Nagash. These creatures are the conglomerate of bones and souls of the best warriors death can offer. A slow-moving, regenerating battle mine of death with access to monsters and strong heroes. The Bone Weepers focus on bouncing back, having access to a ton of abilities to replenish your battle line units. Their spell lore only focuses on this, giving them heavy access to buffs and more regeneration, with damage dealing just being pretty okay. And finally for the factions of death, the Soulblight Gravelords. Your classic vampires, werewolves, and zombies, the sort of undead wages an endless war against the living. A horde army, and can sometimes be ran as an elite army. The Gravelords one is a shambling mess of death and decay that doesn't ever want to die. They play how they look, which is the best compliment one can give. Their spell lures increase their strengths and helps their weaker trap units to survive, while also dealing enough damage to make it impossible for the enemy to ignore. This is also one of the best ways to run Nagash, the god of death himself. Starting off our Factions of Destruction, we have the Gloom Spike Gits. This horde of goblins, trolls, and squigs seek to swarm the enemy to death and plunge the surface into the darkness evermore. A horde army, the Gits follow their Bad Moon into battle. The Bad Moon buffs the board randomly and can bring units back from death as well. The spells they cast all have amazing names and each one has a situational use that can swing around back to you. Next up are the Ogre Maw Tribes. The ogres march to war like a rolling avalanche. These creatures eat everything in their path and worship the Great Maw, their ravenous deity. In Elite Army, they hit hard and have faction-wide abilities that let them hit even harder. This is an army if you want to roll over weaker units with ease. However, beware enemy armies that can prevent you from even getting a chance to strike. They have access to spell lords and prayers, both of which give you amazing buffs to keep your units alive even longer. Next up are the Uruk War Clan. The War Clans of the Uruk are green tides of Wa, killing all in their way. The faction has three distinct sub factions, all of which can be combined into a big Wa. They are simple yet strong, an army that can be a horde or more elite. They focus on fighting well and more than once where possible. Their spell lores buff the fightiness of your Urks heavily and are usually worth taking. The final faction in the game, the Sons of Behemoths. These lumbering giants dominate the battlefield with their size and strength. This is a faction if you want a small amount of models that tower over everything else. Due to fielding less than 10 models each game, you will mostly just be marching up the board and holding objectives, but they are damn good at it. They have no spells or prayers at all. Everything is what you see. Giant lumbering monsters. Thank you for watching this non-Star Wars Legion focused video. There will be more of these coming out. I have another Legion focused video planning to come out on Saturday, and once again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and subscribe.